Hey, welcome back to Homeschool Wherever. My name is Carmen Sinyovi. Are you considering homeschooling your kids, but you work either full-time or part-time and you're wondering how it's possible to do both? Well, in this video, my friend Maggie Mudd and I are going to walk you through exactly how it is possible and the different ways that you can make it happen. So I wanted to tackle this topic because I've noticed that not all, but many of the women who run YouTube channels about homeschooling are actually full-time homemakers. And there isn't as much representation of what it's like to work a job or work in a business and homeschool at the same time. So I really wanted to make this video to show you what that can look like. Now, obviously being a full-time homemaker is no walk in the park, but there are definitely some specific and unique challenges you face when you're trying to homeschool and work either a job or run a business at the same time. And there are some specific tips and strategies we can share that will make that a lot easier. So that's exactly what me and Maggie are going to cover in this video. If you're new to this channel, we are a multiracial secular family living in New York City, and we are homeschooling for the first time this year. We have two daughters, Ella, who's in third grade, and Sean, who's in sixth grade. We're really passionate about using travel as a way to bring our homeschooling lessons to life. This channel is all about documenting our homeschooling journey, so if that sounds of interest to you, I hope you'll subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next video. Also, we are full-time family travel creators, so if you want to see that side of our lives, check out our travel channel at Top Flight Family. Now, please don't think that if you want to homeschool your kids, you'll be forced to either quit your job or close down your business because there are definitely families who work and homeschool, so it can definitely be done, but the logistics of what it looks like can be a little bit different. So as I mentioned, I work full time as a family travel creator, so I've had to figure out how to keep that business running while I'm also homeschooling my girls. Now, my friend Maggie Mudd is also a homeschooling mom who runs a business full time. She is a wedding photographer in Washington, DC. So Maggie and I decided to team up to do this collab video because we feel like this perspective is a little bit underrepresented in the homeschooling community here on YouTube. So in this video, we're gonna go back and forth sharing our tips for how you can balance work and homeschool. So Maggie is already into her fourth year of homeschooling. She has two boys, one is nine and one is five. And interestingly enough, her husband has actually been an elementary public school teacher for 15 years. On her channel, The Muddy Mama, Maggie shares insights for new homeschooling families, tips and tricks for working and homeschooling families, and glimpses into her family's life. I'll link her channel below, so make sure you check her out. Number one, homeschool takes less time than you think. So for people who are not that familiar yet with homeschooling, they probably assume that you're essentially recreating a regular school day in your homeschool. So if a school day at a regular traditional school runs from roughly 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., they might assume that that is something that you're gonna be doing at home too, that you're gonna be schooling your kids from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. But the reality is that homeschooling is not about recreating traditional school. And in fact, homeschooling is much more efficient than traditional school because you're stripping out all of the time-sucking you useless things that take up so much time in traditional school. You know, everything from taking attendance to lining up, to cleaning up the classroom, to the teacher having to pause the lesson to deal with a disruptive kid. When you homeschool, you don't have to deal with any of that stuff. And when you strip out all of those things and you only look at the time that's spent learning, you realize that you can get it done in just a few hours a day. So how long a homeschool day is will vary from family to family, depending on their preferences, but of course also depending on the age of the child. So for preschoolers or early elementary school kids, so pre-K, K, first grade, and so on, the homeschool day may only be one or two hours long. Now, as you go up in grades, typically the homeschool days will last a little bit longer, but they're still nowhere near the traditional school day in length. And that means it's absolutely possible to fit homeschooling around a full-time work schedule. Number two, learning can happen anywhere and anytime. Hey Carmen, Maggie here. Thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. So one area that I like to talk about is that learning can happen anywhere at any time. Don't underestimate how much real learning can happen away from and outside of that traditional school atmosphere. There are many styles to homeschooling and even as someone who really values desk time and focused learning time behind a desk, I have still learned to take full advantage of any time that I can create for learning outside of that desk time. So don't narrow your vision. You don't have to narrow your vision. Uh, school does not have to happen behind a desk all the time. Sometimes and many times you can find pockets of your day and of your week as you go about your life, as you go about your chores, and you can bring learning into those times as well. So a good example is at the grocery store, let your children make the list before you go. 
Let that become a handwriting lesson. Let it be spelling practice. Once at the grocery store, let them keep track of how much you've spent. Let that become some math practice. Uh, if you're driving, we spend a little bit of time in the car and we use that time to discuss the novel that we are reading. We discuss characters and themes, we compare and contrast, you know, the characters, other books that we've read, and it becomes this little, uh, you know, moving literature lesson. Uh, as we take family walks every evening uh, for fun, my husband will like to shout out some math problems to the kids and they're then uh, without paper in front of them. They're, you know, they're kind of going back and, and working through the math skills that they've learned earlier in the week. So find ways uh, because school and learning is going to happen around you all the time anyway. So just find ways to harness that and use it to your advantage. Number three, you don't have to homeschool five days a week. The beautiful thing about homeschooling is that it's really up to you how you structure your time. Now, how I've chosen to do it is to concentrate about 80 to 90% of our homeschool into three days out of the week. And I do it that way because that leaves me two full weekdays as well as the weekend to do work in my business. So because we're focusing most of the homeschool in those three days, each of those days does look a little bit longer than what you would typically see in a homeschooling family. So for us, those days typically start around 9 a.m. and then we finish up around 2 or 3 p.m. depending on the day. Now, of course, we're not doing learning continuously through those hours. We have an hour off for recess. We have anywhere from a half hour to an hour for lunch, depending on the day. So while those days are a little bit longer, on the other two days of the week, my husband teaches my girls, and those days are significantly shorter because the main thing that he's covering that day is science and a couple of other supplemental things. So those other days may only last just one to two hours. So keep that in mind. There's no hard and fast rule that says you have to homeschool all five days out of the week. Structure it in the way that makes most sense for your family. Number four, implement some independent study time. Okay, Carmen, so I want to touch now on independent learning, independent study time. As a working homeschooling mom, I rely on this quite a bit. Now, I have elementary age students, uh, but I know some of you are working with older students, middle up into high school, and in those age ranges, working independently becomes the norm. And I think ideally for all of us, the goal is for our kids to want to teach themselves, that they want to learn on their own. Learning is a skill set that they have acquired and they can essentially teach themselves and do the research and practice on their own and find help when they need it. But, you know, working independently and becoming a lifelong learner is the goal. Now for elementary age students, they need a little more assistance getting there. They need more time and I value very much my one-on-one -on -one instruction time with my kids. There's really nothing better than that. However, as a working mom, sometimes I have to devote a large chunk of time to my work. And in those instances, I love to use online learning tools, online games, to just keep their skills sharp, uh, to sneak in a little bit of learning time independent of mom. So time independent, uh, time on the computer on their own, time reading on their own, time playing games on their own, independent from me, independent from our school time, I think is a huge asset for your children to learn how to function that way and it helps you get your work done. So independent time, uh, you know, don't be afraid of it. Allow your children to learn how to work independently and it will serve them and you very well. Number five, don't forget about evenings and weekends. Now, obviously I want to acknowledge that for me and Maggie, our situations are a little bit different than parents who work, for example, a nine to five job. Because we run our own businesses, we pretty much set our own hours. Obviously there are certain things that have to happen at non-negotiable times like photo shoots or meetings or phone calls. But for the most part, we're able to sort of fit our work around our homeschool. Now for other families, that may not always be possible. Let's say you work a nine to five job. And even if you're doing that job from home right now, chances are you are expected to be on call and available and even maybe visible via Zoom for those hours, which means that you can't necessarily sneak away for an hour to homeschool your kid and then come back and continue your work. So if you have that type of a job or business where it's much more structured, where you have to be on call at certain hours, consider using the evenings and the weekends to homeschool. There are definitely homeschooling families who only homeschool on the weekends or who only homeschool in the evenings or maybe who spread the homeschool across evenings and weekends. There's a lot of extra hours outside of regular business hours during the week. So that's another thing that you can consider. Okay, if you wanna see how our first month of homeschooling went, check out that video below. Many thanks to Maggie for joining me on this video and be sure to check out her channel, which I'm gonna link in the description 
description below. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications and follow us on both Instagram and TikTok at homeschool wherever. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.